to use it to help us to, to get better, to help us with our skills, to help us to improve, to help build us up because he wants us to continue to grow. We were created to be learners and God and the Holy Spirit, of course, is our greatest teacher. Hmm. And part of being taught and learning, as Lisa said, is, is that we get feedback. People are helping us get better at what we're doing. And that's the idea behind um, assessment and evaluation. Okay, so what we're going to do is consider today, what is assessment, <laughs> evaluation? Um, we need to understand and know what is God's heart in evaluation? And what um, does it look like when he does that? Uh, did Jesus evaluate? Did uh, God evaluate and use assessment? And so today we're going to start looking at some of these things and think about them and talk about them and consider them for ourselves within also our own experiences um, that we've walked through. Okay, so we want to start our time with um, watching this clip. It's not too long. Um, it is from a lovely woman named Landa Cope, which I'm sure many of you know. Uh, Landa's been in our mission for so long. She is an elder. I consider her an elder. She's an amazing, uh, wise woman who has given us many insights into what, where we've been moving um, within our university as well. And she was part of being, um, I think a, she used to be the Dean of Communication. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she has a really big heart also for the way we communicate, the way that we love the nations and love one another through our communication. She is also a writer like Lisa. And um, she has written many things, lots of things within our reference guide, mm -hmm. things that we've looked at already, as well as a, a book called Old Testament Template that I personally love very much, mm -hmm. looking at the spheres. Mm -hmm. We've been talking so much about how our university is focused on how do we reach the spheres? How do we reach all of these parts? And Landa carries this. Mm -hmm very deeply in um, really helping us to understand what does it look like for us to enter in and, and see transformation through the spheres of society. So we're gonna watch this clip. Tiago's gonna put it on for us, starting at 4.35. And it should, we're gonna start it at 4.35 and we'll finish at 10.44. Yeah, thank you. It's a privilege to speak at a commencement. It's, I love to do weddings. I don't know that they always love me to do weddings, but I love to do weddings. I love to do baptisms or christenings. I, I, I love to do funerals. They're life-changing events for everyone that's there. Right? Form we struggle to see from God's perspective is the process of assessment and measuring and grading. We hate it in general. We think, oh, what is this for? You know, it's a number, it's a letter, it's a, 
It's a set of numbers that equals some final number that means what. And, and we have really allowed death to creep into the whole concept of assessment and measurement. When every child under the school age of school loves it. If you have a child that hasn't gone to school yet, you know they're, they want it, their height marked on the door. They want you to lift them and say, I'm bigger, Ernie, I'm bigger. They, they want to say, look at me, I'm going to jump. Did I jump higher? Did I jump farther? Did I jump more than they jumped? And they don't, they don't see this as an identity crisis. <laughs> they, they don't think of it like that. They think of it as a process of growth and they're eager to grow and they're eager to get bigger and stronger and leap farther. And, and they're eager to be told, honey, you're not very good at that. You should work on this. You're very good over here. See, that's just a fact. Okay, I'll work on this. I'm very good at this. <laughs> wow, how far we've come. Because by the time we've gone to school for a little while, we think it's a measurement of myself. I failed. I didn't measure up. I didn't get the top number. My cumulative was not where I wanted it to be. What does that mean about me? <laughs> not much. <laughs> it tells you where you are strong and where you're weak, where you are grown and where you need to grow more. <laughs> Isn't that a great thing? Isn't that what we want? No, not since I was five. Well, it needs to be, to be redeemed. It needs to be reformed. We need to get past this because God loves assessment and measurement. He loves it. He does it within his own Godhead. My son, in whom I am well pleased. <laughs> Have you noticed all the things God measures in scripture? You, you, Howard Momstad, who was the founding provost of our university, wanted me to put mathematics in the communication college, which I struggled with having failed math all of my life. <laughs> because it's a language. And that is true, but I found it too abstract, and so I got him to put it in another college. But in, but in fact, numbers is the language of the universe. Measurement is built in to the quantitative and qualitative reality of the world. Measurement is God's way of giving us reality. Somebody, a lot of people say to me, oh, you're only as old as you feel. No, you're not. <laughs> you may not feel old, you may not feel young, but you are as old as you are. And that's 365 days and how many times that rotation went around. 
You see, we live in a real world. We're real people. We have, we have real skills. We have real strengths. We have real weaknesses. We have real laws that function. Imagine if you got up every morning not knowing if gravity was there. <laughs> You couldn't function. And imagine if you were completely devoid of knowing anything about yourself because there was no way to measure yourself against anything else. You wouldn't exist. You see that? And so God loves assessment. It is good, he says. Uh, we're still working on that. <laughs> mm, it's not good for Adam to be alone. Little more work here. He is assessing. He is qualifying, he is measuring. Without this, we would not know who we are and what we are capable of doing. We would not know our strengths, we would not know our weaknesses, we would not know what needs to be worked on, we would not know what is not working on because you're never going to get there. <laughs> Do you know how liberating that is? For a dyslectic that's 67 years old to know that spelling is never, ever, ever going to be my thing that I can just misspell before the world and go, sorry, if you passed that, just correct it in your own notes. How liberating. But I have other things I can do. Amen. And I have other weaknesses. This is who I am. This is the reality of who you are. So I want you as graduates to embrace those things in your degrees programs that you failed or that you didn't get as high a mark as you wanted or that you Oh, sorry, there we go. Thank you for, for playing that for us. I, well, we are hoping that this video can introduce kind of, I think, where we're wanting to go. The U of N is called to redeem so many things. And assessment is one of those things. And it is a tool that God does use um, and a tool that he's given us. Um, to also use. Hmm. So in that video, um, I want to give you some time in your groups to just consider some of the things that Landa was talking about. And specifically, I want you to consider how do I view assessment? Okay, I think it's important for us, we need to start with how do I view it? How am I with assessing people? How am I with people assessing me? Mm. Um, what has been my experience? Because sometimes my view is because that's been my experience. Mm -hmm. um, but experiences aren't always grounded in yeah, truth yeah. and reality. That's right. And as Landa was saying that this is reality. Mm -hmm. This is God's reality. Mm -hmm. And so we need to understand that our experiences can change what is reality because it's just all that we have seen so far. Mm -hmm. um, so I want you to talk about those, th those two questions first, okay? 
And after you have uh, considered this mm -hmm. and shared, we would um, also like you to consider, well, what would it look like or start considering? Mm -hmm. What would it look like to re redeem assessment? Because if it's based on experiences, maybe you have that experience. Okay, well, what, why mm -hmm. do, what needs to be different then? Mm -hmm. how, how, how do I do something that changes and redeems this? Mm -hmm. And I want you to, to also consider um, and talk about this. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna give you um, 15? 15 to 20. 15 yeah. to 20 minutes in your groups. So there should be enough time for everyone to share and to also start thinking through what could it look like differently mm -hmm. um, after you share and mm -hmm. um, how do I view assessment? Mm -hmm. Okay, is this clear? And the should the question should be be through your group leaders. Yeah, they should have your questions as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we'll come back and share. Okay, we'll have a few people share. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how about uh, let's have group one Can group one please share with us. Hola. Hola a todos. Hello everyone. In my group, we shared. In my case, I'm not able to see clearly. And this assessment system here in Colombia is uh, is really visual. So I I was always under disqualified from this type of assessment. And throughout all my school and college, it was really difficult for me because I learned here by hearing more than seeing or writing. So we spoke about this, about the this assessment system. It would be really interesting if we, if people, uh, would uh, be assessed by the strength, if they are. If they learn by hearing, they could have a different way of, of assessment instead of being visual uh, or like each one of their of their, of their own strength. This could help people that have certain disadvantage. Um, it could be really a lot easier if you could be assessed uh, on things that you are good at. That's what we share. Thank you. Thank you. That's really good. Yeah, such a key thing. And I think that's also why we desire to give things in different ways mm -hmm. so people can learn and practice. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. How about group two? That was Felipe. Oh, okay. And Miriam's going to help. Hmm. Try that, Felipe, and see if it works. Hi, Felipe. Can't hear you. Maybe if you turn, Miriam, you put on your uh, put on your Portuguese translation, and then you can hear him. Oh, okay. And then you can just speak to okay. all of us. Agora estou ouvindo sim. Uh, it's just an, it's um pouquinho. Você tem que falar em inglês porque eu tô no canal em português. Tá bom. We we talked about our traumas uh, related to evaluation. E eu só que daí eu mudo para inglês. Ah, okay. Aí. Oh, okay. We're just trying to see. Oh, okay. Okay. Então eu vou pro, pro inglês. Vamos ver o que que vai dar. Okay. We talked about our traumas related to evaluation. Nós conversamos sobre nossos traumas com relação à avaliação. Daí você vai mudando o português, né? Tô, tô, por tá. português. É... Foundations. Ah, eu não sei se o pessoal de português está me ouvindo. Me faça um sinalzinho. Okay. Então, repete, por favor, Felipe. We both uh, did the School of Communication ah, Foundation. Então, todos os dois que estavam no grupo dele fizeram a Escola de Comunicação. 
fundamentos and it was very vida. good to heal some of our uh, evaluation trauma because the school is uh, all about evaluation então a, a, como a escola lidou muito com essa parte de avaliação foi muito bom porque trouxe muita cura para eles nessa área é, a gente pode ver we could see that many times we do things because we know we are going to be evaluated so we do it to uh, reach the criteria é, então eles observaram que muitas vezes eles fazem as coisas que eles sabem que eles vão ser avaliados nelas então eles fazem já para preencher aqueles requisitos da escola é, e, and that's not what it's all about e não é isso que deve ser feito so uh, for us redeeming comes from uh, having the fear of the Lord então redenção vem para gente é ter o temor do Senhor And also, as uh, staff, we, uh, need obreiros, to, we need to observe, nós precisamos observar, to write things down, escrever tudo, and to give concrete feedback, to be objective, e dar um, um feedback concreto, real, uh, to be objective, to, to uh, be based in facts, so, esse é o objetivo, baseado em fatos, so that it can be uh, encouraging, para que possa ser encorajamento real real and we we talked about two types of people the e, one who thinks they did everything wrong é também dois tipos de pessoas aquela que acha que faz tudo errado and the one who thinks that they do everything right e aquele que acha que faz tudo certo so uh, for the one who thinks they do everything wrong para aquela pessoa que acha que faz tudo errado When they leave after a feedback session, they will see things that they hadn't seen about them, which were good about what they did. Quando eles saem da, da parte de avaliação, eles vão, vão ver coisas que eles boas sobre eles mesmos que eles não viam antes. But for the other people, mas para as outras pessoas, the one who thinks they do everything very good and they are perfect, <laughs> aqueles que acham que fazem tudo certinho são perfeitos. It's a little bit harder because they will learn. Uh, things that they could be improved. Para eles é um pouquinho mais difícil porque eles vão ter as coisas que eles precisam melhorar. Uh, so it's all about speaking the truth in love and having então, grace é. and the fear of the Lord. Então uh, uh, o que a gente tem que fazer é falar a verdade em amor, ter temor do Senhor, né, e falar tudo em amor. That's it. Yes. Thank you, Felipe. Thanks. How about group three? You hear me? Okay, um, so we were talking with Michelle and she asked, uh, what do we think about evaluating character? Like more the being or the self of the, pe the person. So we were thinking, thinking about it. Um, sometimes in our schools, we try to evaluate character, uh, how people behave, if they are humble or not, how is their relationship with God? But uh, we were, uh, we have still this question: Is it correct to evaluate character or not? Uh, are there any tools we can use for this? Because sometimes uh, you can see a person uh, with some characteristics of a humble person, but really in their heart they might be uh, pride, or you can see someone that behaves as a prideful person. But it's just because what the idea of of pride in your head that is not God's idea of pride so that's hard uh, and the other thing we were talking about is uh, we have to evaluate what we teach so for example in our concert school we have a girl and she loved to evaluate um, the writing so she was very very with the writing she she put every um, uh, ¿cómo se llama error? mistake when people write their diaries or their journals and she put uh, red uh, with uh, the red marker every mistake but we are not a, 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 a school uh, of writing or spelling or orthography yeah we are teaching more counseling skills so we cannot uh, or that's our idea we cannot evaluate something that we are not teaching in our schools Thank you, Daniel. That's Thank great. You. Yeah, very good thoughts. So we can follow up after the group share back with your question. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, how about group four, please? Um, hello. So with Diana and Francis, we were talking a lot of stuff, but I will make a summary. Uh, something that, well, I could uh, highlight also about the video. It's uh, like about how God pleases, pleases about measuring and uh, with the assessment to evaluate. And also the most part of the people will talking about my, my, myself. I, I'm afraid sometimes to be evaluated. <laughs> and also the most part of the people are, are afraid of that. And also because in the system and in the society, um, the most part of the people want to, to be the better, to be the best and to, to be more than others. And it's, it's not about uh, personal growth, but it's about a competition who, who are best on the other and how to, yeah, to push the others down. And, and, and also, well, in the, in the university of the nation, I could see how God has re been redeeming that, that it's not about a competition, but it's about a personal growth, how to, we want to result order, how to put, put uh, up others. And, and yes, that's, that's something uh, really, really good that we were talking about. Um, and yeah, how the system also evaluate, not by like how this how they, how they say it, like, uh, you know, there is a general like, uh, um, like stuff that you need to, to, how do you say to, to be like to, to look like, and, uh, and not by, by the, by certain areas that you are good and um, they evaluate according to that and not because of your of your gifts or your yeah your personal stuff that you are good but they want to take out something from you that it's not like the the ways that you are like good or that you are doing good i hope you guys understand <laughs> yeah do understand thank you so much that's really good uh we're on five yeah group you're... five group five or was that you yuli was that you yeah yeah oh. okay group six group six i'm four i was i was, a oh, four. I was five. Five. Yeah. okay great so group five Uh, Gabriel, are you there? Yes, we hi. were group five. Okay. But uh, Gabriel was going to share, but I, uh, he's there. <laughs> Pensé que éramos el grupo, el grupo seis. <laughs> I thought we were group six, sorry. So, we shared about the importance of assessment uh, that it is something from God. It comes from God. That the focus is is not on the on the grade, but on the skills that the student is acquiring in the way that he is learning to think. We we saw we saw that it was very important um, that the assessment that we are encouraged to take. Uh, it includes a feedback from the person. It's not just to make a, 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 a work or to, to, to do something. I receive the, the grade and I put that on some wall of my house, but I have the opportunity to have this time of speaking, of processing, and to find out why did we have this, this, this grade and how can we change this for the next opportunity. We spoke that it's very really important to understand the, the heart behind of what we are doing. The heart of why are we assessing? Why are, what are we aiming to? It is so good to, to see God on those things, to see God in numbers. How many of us have had experiences with numbers like in mathematics uh, and so on? That, that have been in the stumbling block, and now that we now it is really hard to, to be assessed 
because of these experiences. He was encouraging, encouraging us in this perspective and in numbers and assessment is something from God. He assessed the creation and he's encouraging us to be able to do this. And we also share that it would be really, really cool if all of our team could see this video and do it together. And so that when we are going to evaluate, uh, we won't just to give a grade and that's it, but we will, we will be able to do it with understanding. It is really important. Uh, we both like uh, assessment, so it was really, really good. Thank you, Gabrielle. Group six, please. In our group, we shared a little bit about how evaluation is something that scares us. It brings this sense of comparison, of competition, something hard and heavy, and it touches our personal value. And then when we thought a little bit about which were our educational experiences, we could only see the bad ones. And then thinking a, a little bit about it and to bring, how to bring redemption. We thought about how we need to switch that key in our mind. That evaluation is not about who we are, which is what Landa shared. And within that, we shared a little bit about how the person evaluating needs to have their mindset on that and how the student needs to be okay with that. Because when the student is okay with that, it's not about their personal value. Even if they are valued in a wrong way, that will not bring weight to their lives. That's a little bit what we thought here. Wow, guys. Wow. A lot. So many things, right, have um, come up through considering. So many um, experiences so many repetitive things also mm. some things that i think are actual global humanity mm -hmm. issues it's not just a, it's not cultures it's competition i have everywhere mm -hmm. competition is such a big thing mm -hmm. um and comparison mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. and it it, and I think that like competition in these can be a really good thing, mm -hmm. like, um, but it can also, again, the motive, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good tool, mm -hmm. but then how do we use that tool? That's right. To so, smash yeah. or to build up. Or to build up, right. So there's so many things and it's important for us as well within the U of N to understand that these are real things. It's not just for us, it's also for everyone. It's, and people are gonna come into our university, come into our classrooms, mm -hmm. and the ability to create uh, atmosphere, create a place that's safe, create you know some of these things we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. And assessment is just one of those things mm -hmm. that causes everything to get uh, uh, more exposed a lot of times mm -hmm. yeah. because there's also a lot of fear behind it. That's true. And fear um, has different reactions, right? Some people combat fear, they, you know, they fight. Some be people run away, right? Mm -hmm. Some people freeze. Mm -hmm. So, you can get all kinds of reactions. And if we're not um, in a place where we're understanding this might be coming, it's not at me, it's coming up out of other things. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always important for us to remember, um, yeah, where people are coming from. Mm -hmm. And it helps when we consider ourselves mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So Melinda is going to talk more about some more principles later. But yeah. right now, I would like to 
look at some scriptures. I'd like to look at, let's look at what the Bible can teach us about evaluation, about evaluation and about assessment. Mm -hmm. And um, so I have given each group two scriptures and I want you to read those scriptures together and um, tell, and then you'll share back with us all together. We'll take turns like we did before. And you'll share with us what you learn that the Bible is teaching us about evaluation, <clears throat> specifically from your scriptures. And if you have time and you can think of um, maybe another example, an example of a story where you have seen an, uh, an evaluation or assessment, uh, maybe how Jesus um, had done it. I only have, um, group five has, has uh, Matthew, but I think the rest of them are everywhere else in the Bible. So if you want to think of something or a story or um, something Jesus taught about evaluating, he taught us a lot about this. So I want you to also consider that. So I'm going to give you 10 minutes um, to read your scriptures, see what it says, and also think of any other examples that you might want to share with us as we come back. Okay? Everybody good? Okay. We'll see you in 10 minutes then. 10 minutes. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Well, I can't wait to hear. We're just going to share what we learned together. That's um, the beauty of group work is that I don't have to do all the work. I get to hear from other people too. We can work together. So let's start with uh, group one again, and we'll just go through so that you can know when you're kind of coming up. So, Grupo 1. Okay. Thank you. É, nós lemos os textos de 1 Coríntios é, 5, é, 12, 6, 11, Filipenses. 1 Coríntios 12. We were reading for quite a while, so we didn't have a lot of time. But the three passages. They show like a sequence. It's something, there is something that is commanded and there is a result needed. The first passage, first question, first Corinthians 5.12, because I am with you, I can judge that. I cannot judge if I am outside, but if we are living together, the way we live together, then I can bring that judgment. So I need to do that. That was the first impression about evaluation. 6.11 brings this thing about justification in Christ. I read the previous verse and it mentions about who we were. And now because of this justification in Christ, it is expected that we live in another way. So uh, I thought about evaluation as this place of pointing a direction where I started and where I can go. And Philippians kind of closes the package because it brings this like step by step Then if you grow in love, you are going to grow in perception. It will help you to make decisions. So uh, evaluation is going to bring that perspective. When you can grow in those things, then you will know where to go and how to go. I also thought about the previous things. We need to know our goal, where we want to get, and then we're going to have expected results according to that. Beautiful. Brilliant. Obrigada, Meili. Good job. All right, group two. 
All right, so Jonathan I will speak in English share, and okay? it will translate. Uh, I hope, oh, he's, he's muted. Okay, so um, we, we had Colossians 1, 28, 29, and Colossians 2, 6 to 8. And we, we shared that uh, with the first text, um, God is calling us to teach people, to teach uh, the ones that are, uh, that he's giving us. And he helps us like accountable for them. Yeah. Dale, Ulises. Yo, I mean, think. No. Perdón, escuché, no te escuché nada, man. Uh, es que what, I, pensé, what I okay. said, it was that um, God helps us accountable for uh, the, the people that he's giving us to teach. Entonces Dios eh, nos hace como... Eh, rendirles como ser parte de la rendición de cuentas de las personas que Dios nos da. Uh, and he he assess us like this assessment is is done uh, with God and like maybe y, no one is assessing us but it it is a, a, an assessment that we are uh, that God uh, that is done before the face of the Lord. That's how we share this. Y y Dios nos Dios como que nos da evaluaciones en las cuales nosotros podemos ser evaluados frente a él. And the second thing that we share is that uh, with Colossians 2, 6 to la segunda 8. Cosa, la segunda cosa es en segunda de, Col de Colosenses. Colosenses 2. Colosenses 2, ajá, perdón. <laughs> uh, is that we have to assess or evaluate the, the teachings that we are receiving. Es que nosotros tenemos, evaluamos de las enseñanzas que nosotros estamos recibiendo. Uh, because it says that in the Bible says, be careful that no one will like uh, deceive you with philosophies. Porque en la en la palabra dice que tengan cuidado que nadie los engañe con filosofías. And the way that we we like we are aware if we are being deceived or not is through evaluating what we are receiving. Y en la forma en la que seamos o no engañados es en la forma en la que nosotros estamos siendo como evaluados. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Excellent job. Okay, how about now group three? Okay. Um, so we, we were seeing Romans 15.2 uh, and Michelle said that we are to put um, us in the level of the weakest to help them grow, not just uh, putting very high expectations over them. It, it, in the verse, it says that uh, we are to uh, not find our own uh, satisfaction, but uh, trying to, to help others uh, being uh, edificar, como es? Okay, so yeah, trying to uh, build up others and not just um, ourselves. Then we said also that evaluation is not to satisfy the leader of the school, but for, the, for building up the students. So that was the main focus of, of this verse. Um, then we, we uh, read Proverbs 2, 6 to 9. Um, so we, we could see that God, um, he impart knowledge, he impart uh, righteousness, but he himself, he walk on righteousness and he walk on, on wisdom. So we cannot uh, impose something over others that we are not practicing ourselves. Uh, God is intentional teaching to those who want to learn. So we were seeing that uh, in the verse, it says that God teach the holy and all those things. So uh, we, we are not to, to waste a lot of energy in those who don't want to listen or 
or don't don't want to walk with God, but we are to focus ourselves on those who really, really want to learn and that are hungry for more. Even Jesus said, uh, those who have ear, hear. So he was speaking to those who want to hear and not just focusing on those who doesn't want to hear. Um, uh, also, Michelle said that uh, Landa said in, in her book, everyone holds responsibility to choose how, uh, how much they want to learn. So um, we are um, to give this responsibility also to the students. And uh, yeah, that, that is what we talk. Wow, so good. Thank you so much. Great input, everyone. Good ones. Um, we're in group four. Yeah, group four. <laughs> I get lost. Group four. <laughs> Bom dia, gente. É, o nosso grupo... Good morning, guys. We had James 1 from 22 to 25 and 2 Timothy 2, 15. James, he's always exhorting us in our, according to our posture. And in this chapter and these verses, he speaks about the tongue and something that we talked a lot in the group and also the previous chats. Uh, everything we speak, brings marks to people and we don't have the dimension of how much that will affect people and what the person will think about themselves what they will do or not do because of something they heard and how many times we came across people who believed they were not capable of doing something because either in their childhood or at home they heard they were stupid incapable, unable, they would never make it, they would never get there because of that method, which is exclusive that we have evaluation, universal evaluation method, where the person doesn't hit the mark, they are excluded from society. One thing that we shared about evaluation, we cannot evaluate according to our standard, what I think the person needs to reach. And in Second Timothy, he speaks about the workman who is approved and handles well the word of truth. So if we handle well the word of truth, we will evaluate according to the word of truth, which is not something personal, but who God is. So both things are not gonna be perfect because things that I carry myself come from a fallen nature. So we need to guide ourselves through the word of truth and refraining our tongue because what we speak can create profound marks in the hearts of people that we don't know what we'll do. But if we handle the word of truth well, we evaluate according to the word and the person will follow a path according to that word and not according to lies that we hear our lives. It was very nice. Thank you, guys. Beautiful. Thank you. This is such good stuff, right? And good encouragements and things that we, a lot of things that we do know. So it's good to be reminded as well and see where they're coming from. Where they, yeah, yeah. Where those truths our foundations. Are. Yeah. Okay, uh, group five, please. Uh, okay having uh, Matthew 7 and Matthew 18 and uh, what we, uh, we were talking is these two uh, Bible verses were talking about how we judge others the same way we will be judged and that uh, the other one is talking that if we need to talk with our brother but if other does listen then we talk with a leader and with the chores and then so we were um, having some principles like we need to really evaluate from God's heart and or heart because then we will be evaluated the same way. So we need to take care of how we are evaluating people and what is our like motivation. But also we need to give opportunity to people to speak why they are no um, a completing the assignment what happened to them uh, are with something and give them another 
first talk with the leader, then with the pastor, then <laughs> before you give up on the person, there is some opportunities. So we were talking about that, that we really need to give opportunity to people, hear people, and uh, be very careful how we are judging. For example, one something that we were speaking that in my school, the FCM, we the pastors, the one-on-one -on -one evaluate the assignments of the students, but some evaluate like here, very high, and others very down. And then we have the students come to me and say, hey, we have the same answer, but I, I get three and he get five and what happened? So uh, we were talking like, who needs to evaluate? There should be a person, there should be all group together. Uh, that's something that a question that raised up in our group, so. Great question. Consistency is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good stuff, guys. Um, group six. We will talk more about some of these things too. Yeah. Well, so. Yeah. Thank group you six. for those questions. Hola. In the group six, we had two verses. De Miqueas seis ocho. In group C, we had two verses. Micah and Joshua. And we were speaking. God, He was really clear. And he communicated with integrity in what things he was expecting from us. He teaches us and he evaluates us. Um, and I want you to, to be bold. I want you to, to be brave and to fulfill everything that I, ha I have commanded you. And I was thinking to be meditating day and night on the things that he's teaching us and to keep what he taught us and to put it in practice. It's not just the mind, but also it's on the heart. And to do that is a, a, a whole obedience. And if we do that, we will be able to be blessed and we will receive fruit, his approval his grace, his blessing over our lives. We also I spoke about Jesus, that Jesus uh, evaluated his disciples. He was always teaching. And we uh, touch about, we talk about this point when Jesus evaluates the heart of his disciples when he says, uh, the one who serves is going to be the, the highest that Jesus taught, and he also assessed the heart of his disciples. And sometimes we think that Jesus can be a really harsh, but Jesus was really kind and loving when he talked to the children, when he talked to his disciples. So Jesus was not only sometimes harsh when he was uh, teaching, but he was a tra transformational uh, leader. So good. Thank you so much. Yeah. So many things in there. And I think it's really key to to consider how, how we're assessing, mm -hmm. right? Um, again, it goes back to our knowledge of what, what is assessment? What's, what am I assessing, you know? Having the skill to assess, right? Um, but also the motives of our hearts and these scriptures touch all of those things because in everything we're, we're whole beings you don't can't just take one one thing or another they all always connect together and it's so important to understand um, question asking mm. um, and making sure we are asking questions because maybe I'm observing something but um, I think we all know that sometimes our actions don't really express what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we don't always hit the mark well in how we represent ourselves. 
So it's so key for us to ask questions. And um, uh, we see that so much, even in the beginning, when God came to mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, he said, he asked, where are you? Evaluation question. And uh, it was an evaluation asking them, where are they? they not location, mm -hmm. but where were they? Where, where's their heart at? What's happened? Something has changed. Where are you? And it was an evaluation question. God was uh, calling them to evaluate what is going on inside of myself and what is going on in this situation. And it's so key for us to ask questions because a lot of times when we ask, people figure it out on their own. <laughs> and um, it also changes uh, our motive and uh, how we do that so and i i do believe that uh jesus oh, he's so amazing right um and he also would teach through these parables that they'd actually be teaching and 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 kind of evaluating right causing them to think through and pointing out at the same time um since being in this lovely culture here um i've understood those so much more mm -hmm. because uh, it's an indirect way, uh, culturally, to evaluate and to assess as well. Um, and a lot of us, um, Latino culture isn't always direct either. Um, and it always depends. Each culture has its different direct things and its different indirect things. And that's also why we clash sometimes. Um, so this is so good to consider and keep thinking. Uh, what does it look like? What's God say? How does he do it? Mm -hmm. How does he show us how to do it? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to take our break. We've had you already for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a 15, 15 minute break. And then we're going to come back together. And look at God's ways. And look at God's ways that we just discussed. We're going to pull everything that we've talked about and sort of summarize, clarify, and finish up in this last little bit with all the things we've talked about this morning. See you in 15, friends. Should I make a buzzer? Beep, beep, beep. Or ding. Or <laughs> da da, welcome back. <laughs> Uh, when I was in Mexico, they nicknamed me Payesa. <laughs> I think that's how you say it, right? Clown. Nada. -da! So. Payasa, payasa. Payasa, thank you. Sorry, my uh, my Spanish is más o menos uh, feo, muy feo. <laughs> well, friends. Um, you guys have been doing such an amazing job today, thinking through these things and refreshing. We've talked a lot about educational wounding is related to assessment and we've all experienced it to some degree. And you guys came up with some really good principles from scripture. And so I'm really grateful for your input and your feedback. We're going to look a little bit about uh, our assessment in relationship to what Lisa had done previously uh, with her with her grid, she made a grid, and I'll share that in a minute. But I want to touch on a few of the things that you guys highlighted because they're so important. What you said, um, you talked about assessing people based on their strengths. What a great idea! <laughs> Isn't that just how God sees us? And that's what Jesus did, right? As a mediator, he covers those things. And it's so encouraging to see. Is, is translation coming? Translation, we're good? Okay. So assessment ba being based on strengths. Also, you talked about, hey, doing this to reach a certain criteria. Aren't we guilty of all doing that? 
And the Bible talks about that too. We all fall short, right? We all fall short. And, and that helps us as Hebrews talked about identifying uh, with others weaknesses. That's what Jesus did. He became flesh so that he could identify with our weaknesses and, and we fall short and he understands that. And I'm so glad that he is our model for that. You also talked about observing, observing people. What are we looking for without a clear uh, outcomes that we've already talked about without clear objectives? We won't be able to have clear assessments. And so we want to see where we're going with our goal of assessments, our goal of objectives, and then evaluate as we go through. And that's observation that comes from when you guys talked about asking the question, can we really evaluate character? Well, actually we don't. Remember uh, when we talked about the belief tree, we never judge someone's character, but we, we can see the fruit of what's inside. And that comes out of the, our beliefs and our values, like Darlene talks about. We see their actions, right? So, so we have the, the worldview and we have the trunk with the beliefs. And I'm frozen, I think, unfortunately. frozen you're okay oh you. okay you guys are frozen okay good <laughs> frozen. oh okay it's me it's me okay great <laughs> so 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 seeing people's actions these actions are the fruit of their values and their beliefs and so are we really evaluating their their actions no we're using their actions to help us ask questions. That's what Anna was talking about. We need to ask questions to get people to think, what do I believe? What do I, what are my values here? Do my values line up with, with what God is saying? And that is how we do assessment. Yeah, Lisa, you have a, something you want to join in with? Yeah, it's a great comment. and. And that's why we started with how do we create clear outcomes? Because to go, well, I don't think you're very teachable. Just, you, you can't just make that statement. It's like, well, what does that even mean? And why am I even accountable for that? And so starting with what, what are the, what do they need to know and do and have in their hearts to, to become who, this course is training them to become. And so if we start with the clear character outcomes, which is what you've been talking about, observable mm -hmm. behavior, the fruit that you can see, then, then the assessment becomes clear because we say, well, here's, here's the outcome, here's the expectation. Now let's talk about how you're responding to that. And so having those clear outcomes is what we base just and helpful assessment on. So you guys are making such good connections. You can see how this whole process unfolds in discipleship, huh? You guys mentioned that when you said get feedback, right? Mm -hmm. Get feedback from the people that you're talking to feedback because sometimes it's clear for us what it looks like how it works but it's not always clear for those we're discipling and so um you guys talked also a lot about servant leadership again this is we are modeling right we're modeling character we're modeling our values we're modeling our beliefs you know god's ways what he gives us what we're evaluating on what we're assessing people on is really 
God's ways of life. And when I say that, I mean that God's ways are the best way to live life, right? And anything else that we try to evaluate is going to fall short. So what we're doing is we're looking for God's ways expressed and his ways bring life. So when we're giving an evaluation, when we're giving an assessment, all we're doing is recognizing the walking out of God's ways in our lives. And that should be a thing like Landa said at the beginning, that we can rejoice. We can rejoice because it's acknowledging of God's, God's ways being lived out on the earth, what he prayed for his kingdom to come. That's what evaluation is. Is his kingdom here? Is it being expressed in our lives? And that's so exciting when we see God's ways moving on the earth. That's what we want. And evaluation helps us know, are we there? Are we going there? And are we going there not just by ourselves, but are we going there together? It's one thing if I'm going there, but it's another if we can, we can go together. And, and as we saw that one man in the city, he, he can't do it all by himself. We need to walk with each other. Um, you know, the Bible talks a lot about one another. It talks about if one falls down, one can pick another up, right? And this is because we care about each other, that, that Jesus was really praying for that for his disciples. And when he was praying in John 17, he wasn't just talking only about his disciples. He says that everyone would see this evaluation, right? Everybody would be able to see and then believe and know and walk in my ways because of, because of your oneness, because of your unity. And so when we evaluate, we're not comparing, we're not competing. What we're doing is we're drawing one another in together and say, come, let's be one together. Let's walk together. Let's go into this direction to change and transform this sphere, right? We have these objectives. So now let's walk together. Let's evaluate. How will we get there? Are we there yet in week three? No, oh, no, we're not there yet. We need to improve. Are we there yet in week six? No, we're not there yet. Let's produce some consistency. Yeah, we need more consistency. And I know that myself, I evaluate myself and I'm like, man, I am not consistent. I need, I need some, I need some help. And that's where things like accountability come in, right? We are accountable to each other, not just in giving a course, but in walking with each other through that course. So I'm going to try and do a little screen share here because we're, we, Lisa asked really good questions. What do we assess? Why do we assess? And how do we assess? Okay, so we're gonna look at the biblical ways that we just talked about, you guys discovered. And I'm gonna see if we can screen share this, hold on. I'm, um, my Zoom is not necessarily, it's not a strength of mine. Here's something where I can grow in consistency. Share screen. Ooh, look at that. Share screen with you all. That's the one I want. Okay, here it comes. Now you get to see yourselves. Can you everybody see themselves? And, nope, not the reference guide. I want this one. Working on it, working, still working on it. There, here is our, oh man, this is terrible. Guys, I'm showing my age. Okay, can you see that? I can make this bigger. Let's make you guys smaller. Let's make this one bigger. Okay, so traditionally, right? We did knowledge alone. That's what normally is assessed in a school. When you're in a school setting, normally knowledge. And you guys, this is the traditional way, right? 
you guys said, hey, that doesn't really cater to people's strengths. Some people are auditory. Some people are really gifted musicians or singers. And so it doesn't work to just do it on knowledge alone. This was painful for lots of us, right? Okay, maybe some skill depending on, on what kind of school you're in. And then why we assess, why we assess is, do you remember what we already told you, right? Uh, and you talked about these things to compare with each other. Well, Bobby remembers, but Melinda, she's so forgetful. She must not be smart. We compete, well, Bobby's number one and everybody else is less. And the point that's supposed to come out of that in the traditional system is that the best people get the best jobs, right? Like we have the smartest or the brightest people or people with innovative ideas. They're supposedly getting the top jobs, but we know that that's a broken system and that does not work very well. And how do we do that? Well, usually we just give people tests, right? Written tests. Can you remember it? Write it down. Well, what if people can't remember? You heard Landa. She's dyslexic. That means things get switched around in her brain. That doesn't mean she's less smart. It just means that things get switched around in her brain. So how can we serve her, right? And how can we serve students like this? in doing things differently. And you guys touched on that already. We could listen. People could give different ways of evaluation, of assessment. We can, if someone gets things switched around when they write, well, why can't they just speak to us? We can evaluate that way. But often written tests are convenient because the teacher can do the evaluating whenever they want and they don't need you there and it's not personal and that's the traditional way right and then what are the fruits well you guys already talked about fear shame a lot of you felt that frustration then or if you're good you could be proud i'm really good at this or you could have superiority because i'm number one or i'm in the top 10 or yeah, and then favoritism. Well, I like Billy. He's real smart. Um, and then, like we said, with being elite, supposedly the best people, well, that is just leaving everybody open to manipulating the system, right? If I can cheat, I can get ahead and then I'm number one, but I'm not actually number one, but I can make myself number one by money, by bribery, by get going around the system. And, and many of us in, these, in the countries we're in, in the countries we've ministered to, or people that we've been with have experienced this pain of knowing that maybe you actually are doing really well, but somebody else jumps ahead because they paid or they bribed the system, right? Or they know somebody, yeah, here it's who you know, right? Okay, so that is, that's the way that we, we, we looked at the traditional. Now we've looked at some of the biblical things, right? We've looked at some biblical ways. So I just wanna fill in, if you have your paper, you too can fill in some of these things, right? Biblical ways. I want to tell you, as you think about it, I'm going to tell you a personal story, okay? Because as leaders, we are confronted with God's biblical ways in evaluation and assessment. So one of the principles that we would all say yes to, right? Raise your hand, okay? Or put a little like um, reaction on your screen. If you believe the Bible is for everyone, right? Is the Bible for everyone? Oh, I see all those hands. Thumbs up, parties, yes. Lots of people love the Bible. Okay, the Bible is for everyone. I believe that too. Until I was confronted with some students who were slow. 
who didn't meet some of the requirements as fast, who had dyslexia and couldn't read, or who had a lot of baggage, right? Character issues, some things that I thought, oh, I don't want to deal with that, right? Here's the thing. We know the right answer. I know the Bible is for everyone. But when I'm confronted with my students, when I'm confronted with challenges, when I'm confronted with systems that don't always work, what if they can't read or write very well? What if they can't perform in the way? I, as a leader, need to figure out a way to evaluate them in a different way. And I need to evaluate what I believe because I will be, I will now take my bias, I will take my subjectivity and I will put it on to the student. And I'll say, well, you know what? Maybe this course just, maybe it's not for them. Maybe this is just um, the wrong timing. Maybe, maybe you, oh, somebody else, right? But that is not God's ways. And so I was confronted personally with figuring out how can I serve, right? You guys talked about this biblical principles. How can I serve my students? How can I serve them in such a way that actually what I believe, which is the Bible is for everyone, actually walks itself out in my life? right? I demonstrate that through my actions. I, we all say we believe it, but when confronted in our schools with the difficult things, all of the sudden, it's more challenging, right? We have to figure out another way to help people. And this is where evaluation and assessment in a biblical way comes in so clearly, okay? So the Bible, like, and that was, for me personally, my confrontation in this area. Okay, now also Jesus evaluates. And we, we looked at some of the principles um, that you guys said, you guys talked about how Jesus um, evaluates. But I'm going to put some text into the chat of, uh, of of Revelation chapter two, okay? It's already translated. And what I want to do is I want you to go into your groups and then I want you to look at this scripture and I want you to think about the, the grid that we just put on the screen, okay? The questions are, are again, so you can, you can have them. What do we assess? So in this case, it's Jesus in Revelation chapter two, assessing or evaluating a church. Okay, so what is he assessing? Why is he assessing them? And how is he assessing? And what does he say the results or the outcome or the fruit of that will be? Okay, so those are the, the same things we've been talking about. What is Jesus assessing? Why? and how and the result okay so i will put that scripture if we could go into our groups we could do um can we do eight minutes please tiago and we will i want you to answer those things and we'll come back and share them and, and fill out our grid together thank you so much Welcome back, friends. Now, I know that was a short time because we're running out of time together. It's running so fast. But uh, I, I just want to, Lisa gave a skit with Kleber uh, and, and that skit was how to evaluate and ask questions and it was vague and unhelpful. So Anna and I are going to recreate another skit thinking about the principles that we've talked about today. 
and demonstrate how we can use question asking and all of these things to do assessment and evaluation, both in a positive and in some challenging situations, okay? So, and then tonight, Lisa's gonna help us with that chart. She's gonna review and keep going and talk about some other ways of looking at things, okay? So here's our skip for you. Anna, can you, can I talk to you? Are you doing okay? How's it going? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm doing okay, I guess. It's been really busy, but you know. Yeah. Are you enjoying our times with the Lord? Um, yeah. Yeah, most of the time I, I, I really do. I do enjoy it. Sometimes I find it a little bit more challenging than others. Mm -hmm. You know, I was with you in, in our intercession group uh, on Thursday mm -hmm. and, you know, your prayers were so powerful and you led us out in the group. Did you know that you did that? No, no, I didn't realize. Yeah, you were really anointed hmm. on that day. You, you really flowed with with what uh, Jimmy was saying. Mm -hmm. And you you connected with us in such a way that I, I've really never seen you lead us out as a group mm -hmm. so powerfully before. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really grateful you did that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, uh, but I noticed that today you were really struggling. What happened? Uh, well, I think I, I just didn't sleep very well. And then I just get so distracted sometimes and I'm tired. And then, and then sometimes, to be honest, I get a little bit insecure to pray out in front of everyone. Oh, really? So maybe it's a bit of that, but then it's also, I'm just really tired. Are you are you getting enough sleep or is something happening in your room? No, I just didn't sleep very well. Are you having nightmares or dreams? No, no. Just, it just was a weird night. Okay, okay. Well, that helps me understand because you know your participation is so important to me and to the group, and you really bring a perspective that we need. Mm -hmm. We need your voice, and so when. When I don't hear you or I don't see you doing that, actually, I, I feel a sense of loss because uh, you, you speak so powerfully and you have such a great uh, influence on all of us. So I, want, I just wanted to check on you because I could see yeah. that you were struggling. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I'll be fine. I just, maybe just was a bit off, but thanks for asking. Yeah. 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 Great. Good talk. Thanks for talking. Okay. okay, so the outcome that our skit was looking for is we look for participation in worship, prayer, intercession. I want people to, to participate, right? So I could have looked at Anna I said, oh my gosh, she has a bad attitude. She didn't pray. Oh, why? What does it matter with her? But what I did is I thought as a leader, I thought about what is she normally like? Or what has happened where I can find something to encourage and draw her in to the group? Instead of assuming that she just had a bad attitude or I asked questions and then I found out she was tired. And then I wanted to make sure there was nothing else going on behind the scenes. Is she having nightmares? Is this spiritual warfare? Is, you know, is her roommate snoring? Is her family having issues? It could be anything, right? And she said, no, no, she just had a bad night. And that helps me to give grace and it helps me to, to evaluate appropriately the outcome that we're looking for okay and so that's just one example one way that question asking 
and having clear outcomes helps me to talk to somebody, especially in a one-on-one -on -one situation and find out what's going on because otherwise I could be very quick to judge, right? And actually she has great intentions and most people are doing their best, okay? Here's the thing to remember, right? We're all trying our best. So I hope that through this session today, this morning, we can think about God's ways in redeeming education. Friends, this is what God is doing through you. He wants to redeem assessment and evaluation. And Lisa's going to carry on chatting about some of those things this evening. So I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say, even though I see it later. It'll be great. And we're looking forward to, uh, to that as well. So um, make sure to bring your boxes, the charts, and we're going to, she's going to continue to look at those and she'll add to what we've done this morning. Lisa, unmute yourself. And uh, please bring a mirror to class. So uh, either bring a mirror that you can just pick up or make sure there's one close enough uh, that you can use during the session, you know, even if it's on the wall in another room or something. Okay, thanks everybody for being here today with us. We like you. We think you're great. You're doing amazing. It's a pleasure again to see you. Yes. Bendiciones. <laughs> Thank you.